Manchester United, Chief Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos have been cost-cutting since taking the reins, and they have now terminated an agreement with the club's former manager, Sir Alex Ferguson. Manchester United part owners Ineos have ended a multi-million pound ambassadorial contract with Sir Alex Ferguson. The legendary Scott, 82, stepped down after 26 years at the helm in 2013, but penned an agreement which saw him become a global ambassador for the club soon after. It's emerged that the agreement, said to be worth in excess of £2 million a year, and in place since October 2013, has now been terminated by Ineos. Ferguson was told in a face-to-face -face meeting with Sir Jim Ratcliffe that the club were trying to reduce costs and that they were no longer in a position to continue paying him beyond this season. Sources have since indicated that the meeting was amicable and there is no issue between the club and Ferguson, who remains a non-executive director. Ratcliffe acquired a minority stake in his boyhood club back in December and has overseen a raft of off-field changes, including a shake-up of the club's backroom structure and a number of redundancies after outlining plans to axe 250 members of staff. The club were the second-highest spenders among Premier League clubs in this summer's transfer market after committing more than £200 million on transfers in a bid to reshape manager Eric Ten Hag's playing squad. Ratcliffe previously waxed lyrical about Ferguson, who is the most successful manager in the club's history after winning 38 trophies during his storied tenure at Old Trafford. Speaking back in February, Ratcliffe said, He was the first person I met when I went up there, which I think was the second week of January, and I had a meeting from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. at his house, and I left at 1 p.m. He never stopped. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of stories to tell, and a lot of thoughts about the club. I don't think he has been encouraged to get involved, but he is still very thoughtful about the club, and he has an immense amount of experience. He really understands the values and traditions of the club and what it's all about. He's still fiercely competitive, Alex Ferguson. In a shocking move that has sent ripples through the football community, Manchester United has terminated its contract with legendary former manager Sir Alex Ferguson. The decision, reportedly influenced by the club's new chief, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, comes as part of a broader cost-cutting strategy since Anios took over the reins at Old Trafford. Sir Alex Ferguson, who managed Manchester United for 26 years and led the club to unprecedented success, including 13 Premier League titles and two UEFA Champions League trophies, had remained an iconic figure associated with the club even after his retirement in 2013. His consultancy role was seen as a way to maintain a connection with the club's illustrious past while guiding its future. However, the recent changes in management and the push for a more streamlined operational structure have led to difficult decisions. Ratcliffe, known for his no-nonsense approach to business, is focused on revitalizing the club's financial health. The decision to terminate Ferguson's contract, though met with backlash from fans and pundits alike, is seen as a strategic move to reshape the club's direction. In a statement released by Manchester United, the club expressed gratitude for Ferguson's invaluable contributions over the years. Sir Alex will always be a part of our history and legacy. We thank him for his guidance and support, the statement read. However, it emphasized the need for a fresh approach in the wake of significant financial restructuring. The reaction from the football world has been swift. Fans took to social media to express their dismay, with many questioning the wisdom of severing ties with a figure as revered as Ferguson. Pundits have debated the long-term implications of this decision, pondering whether it signals a complete departure from the traditions that have defined Manchester United. For Ratcliffe and Ineos, the challenge now lies in balancing the club's storied history with the need for modernization and fiscal responsibility. As they look to navigate the complexities of rebuilding Manchester United, this bold move reflects a commitment to creating a more sustainable future, albeit at the cost of parting ways with a beloved figure. The next steps for both Sir Alex Ferguson and Manchester United remain to be seen. 
While Ferguson has not indicated what his future plans may entail, the footballing community will undoubtedly keep a close eye on how this decision impacts the club's trajectory moving forward. As the dust settles on this unprecedented decision, Manchester United's fans and stakeholders are left to ponder what lies ahead for a club that has always prided itself on its rich heritage and commitment to excellence. Manchester United's deadline day signing is not doing what Dan Ashworth wanted. Manchester United got the checkbook out for Manuel Ugarte this summer, but he has failed to hit the ground running. Manchester United exercised patience to sign Manuel Ugarte from Paris Saint-Germain this summer. United were reluctant to match PSG's initial asking price of a 60 million euro fixed fee and finally signed Ugarte for 50 million euros with 10 million euros in add-ons. The deal was complete on transfer deadline day but it never seemed in danger of collapsing as the player was desperate to join United and the sale was within PSG's interest. United believed the deal showed their patient approach to negotiations had worked, and a source said they felt they had significantly strengthened their squad. But Ugarte has been in Manchester for over a month and he's made just one start in the Premier League. Ugarte was considered a mobile number six and was expected to protect the defensive line by intercepting and recovering balls something Casemiro did brilliantly during 2022-23. However, he has failed to hit the ground running and was an unused substitute against Aston Villa before the international break, with Casemiro selected to come on instead. As the summer transfer window drew to a close, Manchester United made headlines by securing a deadline day deal for Manuel Ugarte, a young midfielder touted for his impressive potential. Fans were excited, envisioning the Uruguayan's arrival as a pivotal moment for the club. However, as the season progressed, it became clear that Ugarte was not living up to the expectations set by both the management and the supporters. From the outset, Dan Ashworth, the club's director of football, had high hopes for Ugarte. The player had demonstrated his skill at Sporting Lisbon, showcasing a combination of tenacity, vision, and the ability to control the midfield. Ashworth believed Ugarte could bring a fresh dynamism to United's midfield, helping to anchor the team and create opportunities for the attacking players. The club invested heavily in his signing, viewing him as a long-term solution to their midfield woes. However, Ugarte's transition to the Premier League proved challenging. In the early matches, he struggled to adapt to the faster pace and physicality of English football. Fans who had expected him to hit the ground running soon became frustrated as he failed to make a significant impact on the pitch. In several key games, Ugarte seemed overwhelmed, often caught in possession, and failing to contribute defensively as expected. Casemiro also started in the 3-3 draw against FC Porto in the Europa League, which represented his first start, excluding in the Carabao Cup against Barnsley since his disastrous performance against Liverpool and Ugarte was an unused substitute again in Portugal. Ugarte was hooked at half-time in his only league start, in the 3-0 defeat to Tottenham when he looked overwhelmed by the pace of the contest. The 23-year-old was not registered in time to play Liverpool, as that fixture was played a day after he signed, which delayed his integration and it's been an uphill battle since then. He has not looked suited to the Premier League and has made a disappointing start. His best performance so far was produced against third-tier Barnsley, and he does not want to become like Antony, who only performs against lower league opposition in cup competitions. The jokes that Antony had found his level when he scored his first goal of the season against Newport County last term wrote themselves, and Ugardi can't suffer the same fate. United's newly created football structure, which includes sporting director Dan Ashworth and CEO Omar Barada, were said to be in agreement that Ugarte would be a strong addition, but he was nowhere to be seen when they recently watched from the stands at Villa Park. Ashworth has a proven track record of getting recruitment right, and Ugarte must vindicate the faith shown in him in the coming weeks because there are lingering question marks. The obvious caveat to Ugarte's poor start is foreign players should always be given time to adapt to English football and be given the benefit of the doubt in their first season at a club. 
The problem is United needed Ugarte to immediately improve the team, given Casemiro's drop-off and how much the midfield is a mess. Ugarte has underwhelmed instead, and even Casemiro has begun to creep his way back into the side, despite being below the level required. Casemiro getting minutes over Ugarte is not a good look for the Uruguay international, and he has a huge point to prove when he returns to Manchester later this week. He is unlikely to start against Brentford on Saturday, and will only force his way back into the starting lineup by excelling in training each day when reporting to Carrington. United were patient to sign Ugarte, but can't wait for him to perform now he's signed. New Anthony transfer claims made as Man United moving toward January deal. Latest Manchester United transfer news and gossip with an update on the future of Anthony and reported interest in Red Bull Salzburg defender Amar Dedek. Manchester United could be set for a busy January transfer window if the latest rumors are anything to go by. United brought in five new signings to Old Trafford in the summer, with Lenny Yoro, Joshua Zerkzi, Matthijs De Ligt, Nusser Masrawi, and Manuel Ugarte arriving at the club. Yoro is yet to make his competitive debut for United after suffering a fractured metatarsal during preseason. Eric Ten Hag's future as United manager has been the subject of speculation over the last few weeks. This weekend will see the Reds host Brentford in the Premier League in the first fixture after the October international break. Men's Sport takes a look at some of the latest pieces of United transfer speculation to generate headlines over the last 24 hours. Reports have emerged claiming that Anthony could be set to leave United in the January transfer window. According to Caught Offside, the Brazilian is the subject of interest from Newcastle and Crystal Palace ahead of the new year. The report claims that United will be willing to allow Anthony to leave Old Trafford in the new year on either a permanent deal or a loan, if one can be agreed. The 24-year-old's former club Ajax are also reportedly in the running to sign the United forward in January. United signed Anthony from Ajax in the summer of 2022 in a deal worth up to 100 million euros, 83.5 million. However, the forward has scored just 12 goals in 86 appearances for the Reds and has made just two appearances in the Premier League so far this season. Elsewhere, United are being linked with a move for Red Bull Salzburg defender Amar Dedic. According to Tuto Mercato Web, United are moving towards signing the right back ahead of the January transfer window. The report claims that United will face competition from Serie A outfit Napoli for Dedic's signature. The 22-year-old is one of the most highly rated young defenders in the Austrian Bundesliga and is valued at 20 million euros, 16.7 million, by transfer marked. As the January transfer window drew near, the atmosphere around Old Trafford crackled with tension and excitement. Manchester United, a club known for its rich history and fierce ambition, found itself at a crossroads. The team had experienced a turbulent first half of the season, and whispers about potential transfers began to circulate, most notably concerning Brazilian winger Anthony. Anthony had joined United with high expectations, showcasing his flair and skill in the early days of his tenure. However, a combination of injuries and inconsistency had plagued his season, leaving fans and critics questioning his long-term viability in the squad. Each match brought its own set of challenges, and while he flashed moments of brilliance, the overall impact had not met the lofty expectations set upon him. As news of potential transfer interest grew, Antony could feel the weight of speculation pressing down on him. He knew the stakes were high. If he couldn't find his form, the club might look to offload him in January. During training sessions, he poured his heart into every drill, hoping to silence the doubters and prove his worth to the team. The camaraderie of his teammates bolstered his spirits, but the uncertainty loomed large. In the background, the club's management was actively scouting for talent to strengthen the squad. One name consistently mentioned in conversations was Amar Dedek, a young defender from Red Bull Salzburg. Dedek had been turning heads in Austria, impressing with his solid defensive capabilities and the ability to push forward into attack. 
His versatility made him an attractive target for United, particularly given their ongoing struggles at the back. The coaching staff saw Dedek as a player who could not only bolster the defense, but also adapt to different tactical formations. As the weeks progressed, the interest in him intensified, with scouts attending his matches and analyzing his performances closely. The buzz around Dedek grew, and whispers in the press began to suggest that a bid could be forthcoming. As the transfer window approached, discussions within United became more strategic. Coach Eric Ten Hag recognized that strengthening the squad was vital if the club was to turn its fortunes around. While there was an understanding that letting Anthony go could provide funds for new signings, the decision weighed heavily on the management. Anthony had the potential to be a game changer, but the question remained. Could he rediscover his form in time? On the training ground, Anthony remained focused, channeling his energy into perfecting his skills. Each day, he worked closely with the coaching staff, studying footage of his past performances and identifying areas for improvement. As the sun rose over Carrington, the training ground of Manchester United, an electric atmosphere buzzed among players and staff. All eyes were on Cheeto Obi Martin, the young Nigerian talent who had recently made headlines with his dazzling performances. Cheeto, just 19 years old, had joined the club's academy a few years earlier and was quickly rising through the ranks. His skillful footwork and innate sense of the game had caught the attention of coaches and fans alike. This morning, as the team gathered for training, Cheeto was eager to showcase his abilities. The session began with a series of drills focusing on passing, shooting, and tactical positioning. Cheeto's pace and agility stood out as he effortlessly maneuvered around seasoned players. Every time he touched the ball, it seemed to dance at his feet. His ability to read the game was uncanny, anticipating passes, creating space, and making strategic runs that left defenders guessing. During a small-sided game, Cheeto's talent shone even brighter. He scored a stunning goal from outside the box, curling the ball into the top corner. The roar of approval from his teammates echoed through the training complex. It was a moment that solidified his reputation as a future star. But it wasn't just his physical skills that set him apart. Cheeto's work ethic was unmatched. After training, while others headed to the locker room, he remained on the pitch, practicing his shooting and dribbling. His dedication didn't go unnoticed. Coaches began to share stories of his relentless pursuit of improvement, likening him to past legends of the club. Off the pitch, Cheeto embraced his role as a representative of his country, often engaging with fans and participating in community events. He understood the significance of being a role model for young players back home in Nigeria. His humility and approachability endeared him to supporters, who began to chant his name in the stands. As the season progressed, Cheeto's performances earned him a spot in the first team. In his debut match, he came off the bench to score the decisive goal in a crucial match against a fierce rival. The stadium erupted, and Cheeto's name became synonymous with hope and excitement for the future of Manchester United. However, his journey was not without challenges. Critics pointed out his inexperience and the pressure of performing under the bright lights of Old Trafford. But Cheeto remained focused, drawing strength from the support of his teammates and the unwavering belief of the coaching staff. He thrived under pressure, often finding ways to turn doubts into determination. With each passing game, Cheeto solidified his place as a key player in the squad. His style of play, characterized by flair and creativity, brought a fresh energy to the team. Fans began to see him not just as a young prospect, but as a potential cornerstone of Manchester United's future. As the season reached its climax, Cheeto's name was being mentioned in conversations about the league's top talents. Clubs from around Europe were keeping a close eye on him, but for now, he was focused on helping his team secure silverware. In the final match of the season, with everything on the line, Cheeto played the game of his life. His brilliant assist and a stunning goal not only clinched the championship for Manchester United, but also etched his name into the club's storied history. 
As he celebrated with his teammates, Cheeto knew this was just the beginning. The journey from Carrington to becoming a Manchester United legend had only just started. With his unstoppable spirit, the world would soon know that Cheeto Obi Martin was a name to remember. As the season reached its climax, Cheeto's name was being mentioned in conversations about the league's top talents. Clubs from around Europe were keeping a close eye on him, but for now, he was focused on helping his team secure silverware. The final stretch of the season brought intense pressure, with every match feeling like a potential turning point. The media buzzed with speculation about Cheeto's future, but he remained grounded, often repeating to himself the lessons his mentor had taught him. Stay humble, stay hungry. In the dressing room, the atmosphere was electric. The team had rallied around Cheeto, recognizing his growing influence not just as a player, but as a leader. Veteran players often sought his input during tactical discussions, a testament to the respect he had earned in such a short time. His confidence grew, and with it, his ability to inspire those around him. One particular match stood out in his mind, a crucial encounter against a rival team that had been dominant all season. The stakes were high, with a spot in the championship final hanging in the balance. The week leading up to the game was filled with tension, but Cheeto channeled that energy into his training. Each day he pushed himself harder, 